Rather than drop the bomb from an airplane, scientists detonated the gadget nuclear device after lifting it up, as Jim Eccles describes. For the test, the decision was made to place the bomb on top of a 100-foot steel tower, not drop it. Now, the steel tower was uh, built to support this heavy bomb because the bomb is composed of this plutonium core, which doesn't weigh much. It's got a heavy uranium sphere around it. And then there's 5,000 pounds of explosives around that and then a steel casing around that, a small one. So this thing's pretty hefty, and they had to raise it up and put it on top of the tower. Now, the reason they did it on top of a tower was because they wanted to maximize the shock wave, the blast effect on the ground. Sabotage was a very real concern. So in the quiet hours before the test, one lonely sentinel stood atop the tower to make sure no one came near the gadget. That guard was Norris Bradbury. My personal concern with the Trinity shot was to get that gadget assembled up on top of the tower and assemble on top of the tower. Uh, speaking of assembling, I mean the made sheet, well, I assembled it on the bottom of the tower to then get the detonators on it and uh, get them hooked up and, uh, and then make sure that nobody monkey with a pesky thing uh, while I had control, I sat there up until it was clear that nobody else was going to be allowed on top of the tower. I wouldn't let anybody come up unless I was there, because I didn't want anybody monkeying with it. I was responsible for that thing, and uh, even inadvertently, somebody might brush against something, you know, and then, so I stayed there until the, until the ladder was uh, locked off. And of course, that tower was vaporized in the explosion. A lot of people come and they don't understand that. They think it was just blown to pieces. It was turned to gas. It was sublimated from a solid to a gas in a fraction of a second and joined the fireball going up. 